You served your opponent's return the ball. What should you do next? Because that's the most important shot in pickleball. Should you drive, drop, or lob that third shot? Pickleball lovers, let's get started right now. There's many factors that determine what you do on that third shot, and we have to make the right decisions, right? One, is the return deep? Two, does it spin a lot? Because if it does, I'm probably driving or lobbing. Three, what is the spin, right? Is it top spin, under spin, side spin, right? I don't know. Four, is it bounce high or low? Is it above my knee? Five, did the returning player on the opposite side get to the kitchen? Because if he didn't, I'd be hitting at his feet. Six has to do with your opponents again. How do they handle lobs? How do they handle drives? How fast is a hand eye? Seven, how comfortable do you feel driving, dropping, or lobbing, right? If you're in a tournament and you're a little nervous, we're gonna go with your strong points. Eight, is your partner running to the kitchen, meaning shake and bacon when you're driving, right? Because if I'm driving and get a pop-up, I want my partner to be right at the kitchen to put it away. That's a shake and bake. In other words, I want them pinching middle. It sounds complicated, but I'll break it down right now. If you're a really good driver, make sure you have a partner that can shake and bake like that. That's shake and bacon. He's pinching middle. The pink, that's what it means. He's pinching middle right on that kitchen line. If you're a really good driver, get someone that can shake and bake and pinch middle for you. This is a really good time to drive because the opponents are not at the kitchen, right? Hit it at their feet, get a pop-up. Maybe your opponent will even shake and bake. Did you find one yet? I really hope you did. Joking aside, it is so frustrating when you hit a really good drive and your partner's not that to put her away. There are some cases where you actually have to drive the pickleball. Here they are. One, if your opponent's return short with not a lot of spin, it bounces above your knee and you're inside the court, drive it, lots of top spin, probability wise, you're gonna win the point. Definitely drive it unless you don't feel comfortable. Try to make it dip, try to make it go left and right, put a lot of spin, right? We don't wanna hit it out. And if it's short in the court, the ball bounces above our knee, we have to drive it. Here's a good example. Short in the court, we drive it, lots of top spin. Here it is in slow motion, it's above our knee, there's no spin we can hit with a lot of top spin. Make sure we don't hit it out, yeah? Dylan Frazier sets up for a third shot. What's he gonna hit? Look at that arrow. Both players on the opposite side are somewhat set, right? Not worth driving. And honestly, I watched and filmed this whole game live, and I would say he doesn't have to drive. He won most of the dinkin' battles in this game. That's what I'm saying. I know. However, when you get this short ball, you have to drive. Percentages dictate it. So if you get a short ball in the court that's higher than your knee, I would drive it all day long. Seriously. Two, we serve. Our opponents return, and they don't run to the kitchen, right? They don't run to the kitchen. What are we gonna do? We're gonna drive it at their feet. If we drop, we're giving them time to get in. So let's not do that. Let's drive at your opponent's feet, the person that's back, obviously. Those are two situations where you definitely should drive. Here's some preferable situations to drive. One, if your opponents hit a really deep return with spin, right, and we're not super comfortable dropping that, we can drive it at 60% to get an easier fifth shot drop and we're playing the probability. So I'm putting the tight end on narrow backspin, the ball's coming really deep. If I try to drop this, what happens is tons of spin, right? Straight down. We want to hit up on that ball and I'd recommend driving it, right? Drive 60 or 80% to get an easier fifth shot drop. One more time, just drive at 60% to get that easier fifth shot. Dylan Frazier. If I was Dylan, the factors influencing whether I drive, drop, or lob would be this. Deep return in favor of driving. Not much spin in favor of dropping. It's windy and it is a wiffle ball he's hitting. So that is the deciding factor and look what an easier fifth shot drop he got right in the wind. If you are drive dropping, I would advise a third shot drive at 60 to 80 percent, followed by a fifth shot drop a lot closer in the court. Hit it high, lots of spin. Two, you have a very good drive and your opponents don't have the best reaction times, right? We want to drive a lot, have a partner shake and bake, and we want to win the match right away. Three, if the wind is against you in a tournament, I'd recommend driving that third shot because it's difficult to drop into the wind. 
put a ton of spin because the wind really holds it up and that ball sinks more and it can be a lot more potent. This also puts a lot more pressure on your opponents. Four, and if your opponents do this, drive it all day. They hit out balls, right? That hitting your out drives and making you look quicker and you're gonna win the match so quick, it's gonna be good. As many cases where you shouldn't drive, let's go over them right now. And it feels nice to win quick and easy points on that drive, but in some situations, it just doesn't make sense. It's gonna make us lose. What are those? One, if you serve and your opponents return with lots of spin, short. It's short, so we think we can drive, it's below, our knee, we try to drive it, it's gonna go out because we're inside the court, it has a lot of spin, I would drop that. Pickleball is not tennis, after all. And if it's short in the court with a lot of spin, it doesn't bounce above our knee, I would recommend just dropping it, right? So hopefully you won't get confused. So if there's too much spin and it's below your knee, what are you gonna do? We're gonna hit a beautiful drop, get to the kitchen and win the digging battle. Two, if you're playing against really good blockers, they're gonna block it right at your feet. So you're swinging really hard, right? And they block it right at your feet and they have better reaction times than you. So you have to drop, get to the kitchen, win those dinking battles, don't drive. Also, those 5-0s and pros can return your drives with nasty angles and put it away. So, you know. At the higher levels, it's very tough to win without getting to the kitchen. So why don't we just drop that third shot? Here are the situations when we should do it. One, and I did touch upon this, but if your opponents return short, pickleball is not tennis. We don't have time to get that drive in. If it doesn't bounce higher than our knee, I would just drop that, get to the kitchen, and win some digging battles. One, I did touch upon this before, but if that return is short, but doesn't bounce higher than our knee, I would definitely drop that, get to the kitchen. Pickleball is not tennis. We drive that, it goes out. Two, and I'm gonna make this a pop quiz. If our opponents are really good at handling our drives, at hitting angles, what do we wanna do? We wanna drop and get to the kitchen. Three, I'd also recommend dropping if you're way off the court, right? If your opponents had a really good return, we don't wanna drive that because we need time to get back into the court, so I drop that, possibly lob that, but definitely don't drive. Here's some other factors you wanna consider if you're dropping that third shot. One, the wind, and in a tournament, it's always gonna be windy. I would talk to your partner about which way the wind's blowing in a tournament to get on the same page about whether you're dropping or driving that third shot. You know how you play in the wind. Two, as you progress more and more to a 5-0, your opponents will really roll that third shot if you leave it a little high, right? They'll really punish you. So think about dropping it to your opponent's inner foot. This makes it extremely difficult for them. So I would try drop into your opponent's backhand or get it to that inner foot, right? It makes it more difficult and we have to place it better as we play against those better opponents. In a tournament, try to keep it away from that player. Hopefully his partner is weaker and I would go to them. One other thing along these lines, if you're playing a really tall person and you drop to them, what can they do? They can Ernie, right? So I drop to the shorter player. Just remember, dropping deep to the person's backhand is always a good strategy. It makes it more difficult for them to roll those fourth shots. You often hear lobbing that third shot is a person for a low skill level. Not true. If you hit a mean top spin lob with lots of spin, it's very difficult for your opponents. AJ Kohler is one of the best in the world and he hits that third shot lob. Yola, AJ. <laughs> of course, a third shot lob cannot be used as a replacement for the drive or drop However, it can cause havoc on your opponents if you use it once in a while. On top of this, it messes up your opponent's timing. It's extremely tough to put away because it's coming down so quick, so they just have to get it back. So it is a high level play in these situations. One, your opponents have a bad shoulder, right? They don't handle lobs good. We want to lob all day. In rec play, they might get really angry. I would try it, but in a tournament, if your opponent doesn't handle a lob good, I would do it more often. And as you do this more, you'll see four or five players even have trouble with that overhead. Even some 5-0s and pros can't quite put it away. Two, when the game goes south and we need a change, I'd recommend a third shot lob. Amen. And if there's a lot of spin, we can also top spin lob, right? Three, if the wind is against you in a tournament, throw up that third shot lob, lots of spin, it'll come down super severely. With the wind, if you throw that up, it's probably going out. It might work, but I just recommend throwing it up against the wind.
when shouldn't you lob if your opponents are super athletic and your opponents getting really mad at you because you keep lobbing and they keep putting it away. So I'd recommend even if you're amazing third shot lobber with crazy topspin, don't lob to those freaks. Two, I said if it's windy, I'd recommend the lob, but if the wind's really gusty and you throw it up, it's probably going out. So definitely don't throw it up. Pickleball lovers, do you agree with me on the third shot strategies? Lob, drive, drop. When should you do it, right? Leave your comments, save 10% on any battle, keeps us in business so we can keep doing this. The only win-win in life. And don't forget to have a good day.